Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Uh, this is the third session of the Tooth Development. So in this session, what we are going to cover today is uh, like we are doing to do the balance stage of tooth development. And the balance stage, it is divided into two stages. One is called the early balance stage and the second stage is known as the late balance stage. Uh, in the late balance stage, or how the late balance stage is different from the early balance stage, that the, in the late balance stage, there's formation of the heart tissues of the tooth, two main heart tissues of the tooth. Uh, first, the dentinous form, and later, there is formation of enamel. What else we are going to cover? We will also discuss the formation of the permanent dentition, like how the permanent teeth, they are formed. So, in the balance stage, the cap, it depends, and the enamel organ, it resembles a bell-shaped structure. So, in, in the cap, sh cap stage, the shape of the enamel organ is like a cap. But in the bell stage, because of continuous cell divisions, this enamel organ, it assumes the shape of the bell. Now, enamel organ, it assumes its final position shape uh, in the bell stage, like now the enamel organ, it is not going to change its shape. And this property is known as the, uh, this differentiation is known as a morpho differentiation. Like morphologically, now it is not going to change its shape. Now, the cells, they achieve their final shape. In, uh, in the late bell stage, now the cells, they will uh, achieve their final shape. And we call it as a histo -differenti uh, differentiation. Like the cells, they will become histo differentiated finally histo differentiated now there are some cells in the periphery of the enamel organ and as already i have described these cells are known as the outer enamel epithelium and these cells they are low cuboidal in shape so these are the cells and these cells they are low cuboidal So these cells, they are low cuboidal, and these cells, they are known as the outer enamel epithelium. Now, in the external enamel epithelium, it helps in the maintenance of the shape of the enamel organ. Uh, and they help in the exchange of substances, uh, because the blood vessels, they are present outside this enamel organ. The blood vessels they are present outside, so they help in the exchange of substances from either from the enamel organ or uh, these cells that are present inside the enamel organ, they need nutrition. So this external enamel epithelium, it serves as exchange, uh, it serves as, it helps in the exchange of substances. Now, there are some cells that are close to the dental papilla and we call these cells as inner enamel epithelium cells. These inner enamel epithelium, they become tall columnar and they, later they become tall columnar and they will form, later they will form the ameloblasts in the bell stage. So these cells now they are short columnar, but at, as I told you later they become, they will become tall columnar. Now, this is the outer enamel epithelium. And this is the inner enamel epithelium. Now the outer and the inner enamel epithelium, they meet at a point. For example, over here and over here. So this point is known as the zone of reflection or cervical loop. So this is the area where outer and inner enamel epithelium, they unite with each other. And this area is known as the zone of reflection or cervical loop. So this area uh, basically it helps in the formation of the root uh, that we will discuss later. So this outer and inner enamel epithelium they help in the formation of uh, root. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention like in the bell stage uh, as I told you this uh, the enamel organ it assumes its final shape. So actually you can identify whether this is the enamel organ or this is a tooth germ of an anterior tooth or a posterior tooth. For example, here you can see the future cusp tips. 
So it becomes here the future. It basically this epithelium it defines the shape of the of the tooth. So this is the posterior one. In case of an anterior tooth germ, it, there will be incisor ridge or cingulum. Now a new cell layer it appears just adjacent to the inner enamel epithelium. So you can see over here. A new cell type is present and this is known as this this cell type is known as the stratum intermedium now this stratum intermedium is it basically it helps in the formation of enamel uh, maybe by uh, through release of some organic uh, uh, substances like proteins uh, together with the with, with these cells now, there are some cells that are called as stellate reticulum cells. We have talked about these cells in detail in session three. Uh, these are the stellate reticulum cells, the star-shaped cells. So these cells, basically, they uh, provide mechanical protection of the cells that are present below these, uh, below this stellate reticulum cells. So these cells, they provide mechanical protection to the underlying cells. Now, this, this, these cells are known as the dental papilla cells, and the dental papilla cells, they are separated from the inner enamel epithelium by a basement membrane, and there is a cell-free zone as well. There are some cells that are present around this enamel organ and dental papilla. These cells, they are known as the dental follicular cells, and these cells, they have, in this area, there is more collagen fibers. There are more collagen fibers. Now, uh, there's a term that is known as epithelial pearls. Now, the developing tooth, it is normally attached with the oral epithelium with the attachment that we call it as, we call it as dental lamina. We call this as dental lamina. In the later half of the bell stages, bell stage, what happens? It is disintegrated and the cells usually they disappear, but sometimes these cells they form epithelial pearls. So these are, they do not disintegrate and, and disappear and they form. So the developing tooth germ is, is attached with the help of dental lamina. But later in the bowel stage, what happens, this dental lamina, it disintegrates. When this dental lamina it disintegrate, now the tooth, now the developing deciduous tooth, it develop independently without any connection with the oral epithelium. But these cells, these cells, sometimes they dis disappear and sometimes they remain in the uh, connective tissue portion. And we call these cells as epithelial pearls. Now, these epithelial pearls, uh, they may form some extra tooth uh, that we call it uh, as supernumerary tooth uh, because they have epithelium epithelial component they have connective tissue that is surrounding this epithelium epithelium they may form cyst or they may form a tooth like structure now uh, tooth like tissues that we call it as odontome now this structure uh, this structure they need a profuse blood and nerve supply so let's discuss about blood and nerve supply. During cap state, uh, blood vessels start to appear, uh, but the number of blood vessels, they increase uh, during the bowel stage because during the bowel stage, now there is formation of dental heart tissue. So these are the blood vessels. So blood vessels, they are present over here. near the outer enamel epithelium and they are also present within the dental papilla region. So they are supplying these cells of the enamel organ. Now the cells they need, um, now the, enamel, the developing tooth, it needs the nerve supply. So the nerves, uh, it, they start appearing early from during birth to cap stage of tooth development. So the initial innervation uh, is in the is in the dental follicular region. So initially the nerves they are present in the dental follicular region, but uh, later these nerves they also start appearing within the dental papilla area.
So later, uh, these nerves, they enter the dental papilla as well. Now, how the permanent teeth, they are formed. So this is a developing, developing uh, deciduous uh, tooth germ. So how the permanent teeth, they are formed, uh, formation of, there's formation of another tooth bird on the lingual surface of the deciduous uh, tooth germ. For it, let's assume that this is a tooth germ of a molar because they are cusped and this is a proximal aspect. I mean either the mesial or the distal aspect. So on the lingual side, for example, if this is a lingual side, there is formation of another tooth bird. From this dental lamina, there is formation of another tooth bird on the lingual side. And this tooth bird, it is of the permanent uh, tooth. So let's let me explain this for you in more detail. For example, this is the lower arch. So 10 tooth germ, they are developing five on each side. Of the deciduous teeth. One, two, three, four, five. and below this, the, and, uh, for example, this is one of the tooth germ that is developing. So this tooth germ, it will give rise to, from the dental lamina, it gives rise to another tooth bird, and this tooth bird is of permanent tooth. For example, this is a tooth germ of the deciduous central incisor. So it will give rise to a tooth bird of the permanent tooth. This tooth, this developing tooth, the dental lamin of this developing, uh, um, dental lamin of this developing tooth will give rise to tooth bird of the lateral incisor. This will give rise to tooth bird of the permanent canine. This will give rise to the tooth bird of the mandibular first premolar and this tooth bird, this tooth germ, it will give rise to tooth bird of the mandibular second premolar. So this is how the, uh, the permanent teeth they are formed. But how the permanent molars they will form? Now the permanent molars, for example, uh, as I told you, this is the developing model. So one, two, three, four, five. So these are the developing tooth germs. And each of these developing tooth germ in the bell stage on the lingual side of the uh, dental lamina, there is a development of a tooth bird. And that tooth bird will give rise to the uh, to the permanent tooth. But how the permanent molars they are formed because they do not have any deciduous um, counterpart. So there's this, for example, for here. There's development of a single dental lamina. And this single dental lamina, it gives rise to Three birds, and and these three birds, they will they will later form into first molar, second molar, and third molar, and third molar. Now, we will discuss now the late bell stage of development and the late bell stage of development is also known as the apposition stage because uh, the two cells, uh, inner enamel epithelium and the dental papilla cells, they come close to each other and they start depositing the heart tissues. The inner enamel epithelium, they elongate. So these cells are known as the inner enamel epithelium and these inner enamel epithelium uh, epithelial cells, they further they elongate. And their nucleus, it shifts towards the stratum intermedium. So, now there's an elongation of these inner enamel epithelium, epithelium cells. 
the undifferentiated, um, let me erase this. Now, these undifferentiated cells, they, they increase in size and they differentiate, they start differentiating into odontoblasts. So, these undifferentiated dental papilla cells, they start differentiating into, into cells and these cells are now called as dental, uh, now called as odontoblasts. Now, the differentiation, it first starts at the future cusp tips and then the differentiation, it goes downwards towards the cervical area. Same in case of incisors, the differentiation, it first starts at the incisor ridge. So, you can see that in, uh, near the cusp tip, the cells, they are more developed as compared to the cells that are present near the cervical area or zone of reflection or cervical loop. Orientoblast, they begin to produce the organic matrix. You can see over here. So you can see this orange color. It corresponds to the um, dentine. So they have start depositing the organic matrix of dentine uh, near the cusp tips. So as soon as sorry, I, I meant uh, as soon as the first layer of dentine is formed. We now we call these this dental papilla as dental pulp. Now, as soon as the first layer of dentine is formed, these these cells they differentiate into ameloblast, and these ameloblast they started depositing the organic mat uh, they started depositing the enamel matrix. So here you can see this white color. It corresponds to enamel. And it, it is also deposited near the cusp tips and later this deposition it continues downwards. There's a lot of epithelial mesenchymal signaling uh, during this differentiation um, and we, that we call it as reciprocal induction. For example, these tall columnar cells they release um, and these are the dental papilla cells. So these tall columnar cells, they release some proteins and under the influence of those uh, proteins, uh, there's differentiation of these dental papilla cells into, into odontoblasts. So now they differentiate into odontoblasts and these cells now they secrete some substances and that result in the differentiation of this tall columnar cells into ameloblast. So, uh, and, and this, and disintegration of this uh, basement membrane or basal lamina. So this whole process is known as the epithelial mesenchymal uh, signaling or uh, reciprocal induction. Thank you very much. Uh, in the next session, we will discuss the um, formation of root. Um, you may ask, you're free to ask questions in the comments. I'll try to explain your queries. Uh, again, thank you. Please do give me your feedback. Thank you.